All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome into the stream. Hello, hello, hello. So, today, um, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be learning about line art. Now, last week we talked a bit about, uh, what was it? I think it was blending. So last week was all about blending. This time around, we are going to be learning about line art. Now, when it comes to line art, you know, there's a lot of different things. Um, well, not actually, there's actually very few things <laughs> that you need to keep in mind when it comes to line art. Um, and I will talk about both of those things. Um, and we'll start off with talking about that, and then we'll get into the actual full illustration um, that we are going to be doing. So there was a poll that was on our community for what kind of character I would be designing and illustrating. And this time around, everyone voted for royalty. So I'll be drawing a more royal character with very intense line art um, because I love line art and I would love to just do a full stream of me just lining something. Um, but if you did not know our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together so if you're an art nerd too be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings because we're not just a youtube channel we are an art school too so if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content consider supporting us on patreon where you can get access to tons of fur perks like my working files critique sessions and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone all right hi hello welcome in ragu this is the first stream i can catch up uh we have to finish a lot of assignments that's okay <laughs> assignments are more important than watching the stream your education comes first Okay, so for line art, there are two things, two very minor things that you usually want to keep in mind with lining. All right, so the very first thing you want to keep in mind is your line weighting. Line weighting. All right, so that's changing the thickness. of your lines. Right, so line weighting is when you have different thicknesses and different sizes of your lines that you're using, right? So it depends on how you do all that stuff. I'll leave the stream open while I'm trying to finish this stuff. You're all great. I've learned a lot from your videos. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you for kind of tuning in and having it in the background. <laughs> Even if you have me on in the background, that's totally okay. I do that too. Um, but Hello, Amaya. Welcome in. Um, but yes, changing the thickness of your lines is what line weighting is, right? So, you know, a lot of line art that you see, not everything is the exact same thickness, right? So if I turned off, I can, yes, I can. Actually, let me use the pen for this. All right, so let's turn off size by pressure for a second. So this is no line weight, right? Every single line is the exact same width, right? All the lines have the same width here, right? If I were to add line weighting to this, oh, well now I'm just adding more details too. <laughs> This has line weighting, right? So this is no line weighting. This has weighting. Right? So line weighting is changing the thickness of your lines. So a lot of artists you'll see, hey Jesse, hope you had a good day. I hope you have a good day too. Hello, Devil Wafer. Welcome back in. 
I had an all right day. I woke up kind of late, as in I woke up four hours ago, but, <laughs> you know, all okay. Um, so, no waiting versus waiting. A lot of artists will say, you know, you need to have lighting waiting. You always need to have line waiting. That isn't necessarily true, right? You don't have to have line waiting. To have waiting. But it can add new dimensions. to a piece. So I love line waiting. I use a lot of line waiting, um, but I also love illustrating with no line waiting. Um, it's a fun little exercise that I do sometimes with no pen pressure. Um, but, you know, you don't have to have line waiting, but it can add new dimensions to a piece if you do decide to add in your line waiting. All right, but sometimes, sometimes we don't know where to add our waiting. Right, sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, I've been told to add line waiting to everything, but I don't know where, right? So this is when our line hierarchy comes in. Right, so we have our line waiting and our line hierarchy. Line hier hierarchy determines where Lines should be thin or thick. Right, so our line hierarchy, hierarchy is what determines where our lines should be thin or thick. Right, so where should we make our lines a little bit thicker? Where should we make our lines a little bit thinner? Is there a way to make a line with the shift key, but instead of a line, it's a curve? I'm not certain. Mainly because I never use any of the shape tools for my line work. Um, I only use the shape tool. Like, I, I, I'll I, only use the line tool, but, like, I'll never make make them with the curves. Because I find it looks a little bit mechanical. Um, so I'm not certain. There should be. <laughs> there might be. Um, but yes, so... So it determines where lines should be thin or thick. So my hierarchy is that number one, the main silhouette should be your thickest lines. Right, so the main silhouette of your main point of focus is what should have the kind of the thickest lines, right? So the very general outline of your character. So say if we had our little character here, right, this kind of all outer line here, how much you exaggerate it is up to you, but generally the silhouette is what should have the most attention drawn to it. So the very, very outer line of it, the main silhouette of your main subject is what should be the thickest, generally. Number two, the main details. Or main sections, I guess. That's, you know, the base, like the regular like outline of just the whole head or your arms or stuff like that, right? Main sections of the characters, right? Oops. Right, so the main silhouette, I should actually put a little subtext underneath that. of main subjects main sections three bigger details
Right, so your bigger details are like other sections of the clothes, right? So maybe there's like... Shirt collars. Belts. Buttons. Etc. Right? So those are the bigger details that are within a piece, right? So you have your, your main thing, right? Which is like, say, if you have like your main outline, which is like the biggest silhouette of your main character. Then you have the inside of that, right? So you have like a coat right the kind of outline of the coat is the next biggest lines that are in there or the next thickest lines and then the second thing um the third most thick thing would be the collar of that jacket right so maybe you have the the, the collar. say it's like a pea coat you have the collar of that and then you have the buttons going down or the main thing that cuts the whole thing in half right stuff like that so those are your bigger details and fourth is patterns oops Minor details. So that's like small creases. Textile patterns. Etc. Hey yo, hello Jay, welcome in. Etc. Right? Jay is our lovely graphic designer, one of our lovely graphic designers. And Amaya currently is helping out our team a little bit. So, our line hierarchy determines where lines should be thin and thick. So, our hierarchy, kind of how I've set it up for myself, is that you have your main silhouette, the silhouette of the main subjects. S. <laughs> and then you have your main sections, so like the head, the arms, clothes, etc. Bigger details, and then patterns and minor details. So small creases, textile patterns, etc. So say if you have like a floral blouse, right? The main outline. You know what? I'm actually going to do that. So say if we have like our character here. I'm actually going to... You know what? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Let's organize all this once again. Okay. Let's make this like that. Change this one to... It's just going to be a square. <laughs> so let's say that we had, like, our main... Hello, Dragon Scar! Welcome in! Glad you could make it. So let's say we kind of had our main person. Yes. <laughs> and let's color code this a little bit. So let's say that this is the main. <coughs> oh, goodness gracious. Hello. Sorry. The pollen is rampant outside, y'all, and I am heavily allergic. So, <laughs> I am dying just a little bit. Hello, tea lover. Welcome in. Glad you can make it. So, let's say that this is our main thing. Let's do a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. The next biggest color. I also will choose the next darkest color. Let's see. Thank you. Hello, Yuri. Welcome in. One of our instructors that constantly returns here. Bless you. Thank you. Alright. This is our next one. Then this smaller details. Kind of like that. And then let's see if there's like flowers. Bless you. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Yeah, epic. So that's kind of how what I mean with my line hierarchy, right? So it's kind of choosing 
where each of these things go. So let's change this then. So the main sections. So number one is the main silhouette. That's all in black. The main sections is this color. Bigger details is this color. And patterns and minor details is this color. All right. So that's kind of what we want to think of when we think of our line hierarchy, right? So that kind of helps organize certain areas and it also kind of helps the eyes move around your canvas a little bit better, right? If everything is the exact same thickness, it can get a little bit messy. Um, so then that means, you know, how do non-weighting, oh, I should have made this, I should have kept this longer. Um, so now you're wondering like, how do people who don't use line weighting separate different sections right because with line weighting that comes with line hierarchy right but if you don't use line weighting how do you separate it well that's easy it's with color Oops. what if i don't Use waiting. Distinguish with color. So that means you'll be using different colored lines, right? So say if you had like your your main silhouette maybe will be in like a really dark color, right? Your next main sections will be in a color that's closer to your base colors, right? Bigger details, even closer and patterns of minor details that you could use like no lines at all, right? You could just stick to only color for that section, right? And that's all kind of up to you, how you decide to weight your characters or how you decide to make your, where you want the eyes to go in certain sections, right? And honestly, that's literally, that's pretty much all I wanted to bring up when it comes to line art, right? There isn't that much to it. It is mostly just, you know, yeah, you know, it is mostly just like, you know, figuring out where you want to put your weighting, where you want to. If you want weighting at all, you know, some people don't weight at all. Um, how thick you want your overall lines to be, how thin you want your overall lines to be, right? I tend to be a bit of a thicker line arter. Wow, I've never... <laughs> I've never turned line art into a title before. Um, line artist. Um, I'm more a thick line artist, line artist, but I have quite a few friends who prefer to line art very thinly. Oops. There we go. Right, but how much weighting you put on your lines, how thick you make them as a base, is all up to you, right? It's all about style. So, that means we can get to the actual illustration faster. So, because <laughs> I think I'm going to need it. Because I want this one to be kind of intense. to be longer. Let's make this 4,500. So, you guys voted on, no, let's make it longer than that. You guys voted on royalty. That was what the overall illustration was going to be, right? But I'm not just going to draw somebody in a dress or somebody like, you know, wearing the royal fancy clothing, right? I want to kind of make it more interesting, all right? As in, I just, I, I want to, I, I was in the mood of draw a dragon. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling ex inspired by a more fantasy Something a little bit more fantasy-esque, right? Because, um, you know, royalty doesn't necessarily mean they're always in the same European dress and in the same European country, right? Royalty can be anything. There's so much you can do with just the concept of a royalty. Right, so I'm kind of thinking that it's a little bit more... Also, I've been, like, really into some different games recently, and I'm, like, kind of feeling that elegance, you know?
I'm kind of thinking. I'm keeping it entirely zoomed out for the sketching portion. I was originally going to, like, you know, do the sketch before. <laughs> but I know that you guys like to watch me do my, um my sketch and planning on stream, so that's what I am doing this time around. I'm actually going to draw a woman this time because I'm kind of in the mood for that, but... Yes, I am in a bit of a dragony kind of mood. Which games also hello. Um <laughs> Resident Evil 8. <laughs> Which obviously I can't really draw art for, but um you know, I'm kind of in a large character mood, I suppose. Um And yes, welcome in Gabriel R. Foxman. Glad to have you back. We haven't done too much. The explanation in the beginning wasn't that long. I've also been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild, and I see the... I always see the, the dragons pop up all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I love those things. So I'm kind of in this kind of serpenty mood with a with some kind of fantasy royalty, you know. Trying to stay as zoomed out as possible so I don't get too caught up on certain areas, though I do know that I will have to get caught up on certain areas during the line art section because I want to make this very, very intensely detailed. So I will be zooming in a lot for this one. Am I doing Mermaid? I did one post for Mermaid because I can't keep up with the full month. I have a few students who are doing the full month. Um, but I did one post for it and then for... Um, for my classes, we are doing, we did Mermaid for a couple of weeks. So I have done Mermaid a couple, I'm sorry I keep sniffling, by the way. I, it's, it's allergy season and I am kind of dying. I shouldn't have kept my window open. Um, but yeah, we're doing, we did Mermaid for a couple of weeks in my classes as well. I'm just kind of figuring this out right now. So I'm going to do a couple of sketch passes because I don't want to just, you know... Well, I mean, I would, but... <laughs> I want to kind of figure out where all the details are going because especially when something is a little bit more detailed, I usually like to... Oops. When something is a little bit more detailed, I like to kind of figure it out as a sketch first before I actually get into the final thing. So I'll get more into the actual details of this afterwards. This kind of reminds me of the newer fossil Pokemons I find that I, I feel that. Do I find my job exhausting? I find that every job gets exhausting at points, you know? That's kind of saying nothing though, because I, I'm always exhausted. <laughs> That's just kind of like my constant state of being. So like, 
it's not saying much if I say that, oh yeah, I'm exhausted. It's like, you know, that's just kind of how I am all the time. You know what I mean? Honestly, I've like, with like Sword and Shield, I never got any of the fossil Pokemon. Because I kind of like, I, I figured out what I wanted my team to be. And then, like, I just never really... Like, I, I still caught other Pokemon, but, like, I never raised any others. So I was, like... I never ended up <laughs> getting any of the other fossil Pokemon. I know other people did, and I was, like, well... well not gonna bother with that. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking... This kind of nobility, because I'm feeling a bit like a kind of Chinese dragon kind of centaur character. Because I know that centaurs, centaurs are such a cool concept. And I love when artists do like centaurs and griffins and everything of like other animals. Like I love like the, I've seen like really cool griffins. One of my favorites is like when they take owls and then combine them with like just house cats. <laughs> Those are my favorites. Um... And I've seen centaurs. One of my favorite centaurs that I've ever seen is like somebody did like a deer, like these really cute deer characters. Um, I love the dragon ones. I really like goat ones. I've seen ones with goats too. They're not like fawns, but they're like centaurs. Like so, you know, like the half, the half body kind of deal. And you know, I'm kind of in a. Lady Dimitres kind of mood, so. <laughs> We're vibing with characters like this. I have a lot of references off to the side that you guys can't see, mostly because I ha I'm using like a ton of them. Um, I planned a little bit before the live stream started, so, whoops. I planned a, a little bit before the live stream started, so. I have, like, you know, some stuff off to the side. And, like, I can't put them all up on the side over here, so... <laughs> I want to constantly access them, you know? Alright. Because the hair is a little bit tricky. As I constantly switch back and forth. <laughs> okay, can I do this? Hmm. Hang on, I'm trying to figure something out. Okay, that should work, hopefully. I'm just organizing my windows a little bit better because I only have two screens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this lady has like a headdress. This so this is gonna have a lot of patterns on it. Hmm, pattern heavy. <laughs> Something that I tend to avoid. I need to make it longer. Longer. There we go. <laughs> Not enough width. Still needs to be longer. Uh, the reason why I keep making it longer and longer, even though I have some room, is because the something. Um, oh, this should be 15 1. Oh, well, I'll change it afterwards. Um,. Let's make that 6,000. It's something called choking, right? And you don't want your piece to be choked, right? That means that it's too close to the edges of your canvas. Right? So if your piece is choked, then it can feel very, very 
close and very constricted to the edges of your canvas and that's something that you don't want so you need to be kind of wise with how your piece is centered okay Which do I choose? Which do I choose? I think I'm gonna go with this one. This kind of vibe here. Not very, very rough to start out, right? So now I'll move on to sketch pass two, which is when I'll start to block in more details. I bigger the chopsticks also high. Hello. Hello, Undead Donut. Um, not chopsticks. That's a long cigarette. So now I'll start to add in more facial features. That eraser is far too big. I've decided to hurt myself and work with a head angle that is more tricky. <laughs> For me, it needs a little bit more room, and also the creature is big. It'll cool see a little bit of air perspective. Aerial perspective is something if I were to be doing a full background. Um, I am not going to be doing a full background. Hi, just joined. Hello, Elsa. Welcome in. Um, I will not be doing aerial perspective because this will not be colored at all. It's just going to be lines. Um, an aerial perspective is something that is more done with, well, yes, larger things, but you would need to you know, have some kind of background to go along with it. Adding aerial perspective without anything can feel very, very fake. Um, so you have to be kind of careful when you're doing it. Um, and yeah, just character illustrations. Like, unless if there's, like, you know, a huge background, it can be a little bit closer to the edges. It's kind of my feelings on it. Adding too much room, however, um, to a piece. You want it to be close enough so it fills up the whole canvas, but if you make it too far away from the edges, it can feel like you're wasting space. So you kind of have to know where that balance is because if you make it too, too far from the edges, then it just feels like you're wasting canvas size and it can feel a little bit... It can feel a little bit empty, you know? Yes, welcome in, Elsa. We are just going to be... Most of the stream is going to be lining this. Because <laughs> this is a line art stream. I did want to do a full headpiece, but now I'm like, now I'm like, do I? Because <laughs> I don't know if I do. 
I could just add like flowers. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do that. A little bit easier. This one's already gonna be high detailed anyway. So this is only going to be a character illustration. There isn't really going to be any backgrounds for this one because we've been doing backgrounds so much. <laughs> it's about time we do some characters only. Is there a reason you're drawing in blues or just a preference? It's just a preference. Um, I like to have my sketches in blue. Um, I used to work from blue to pink to black. Um, or if I'm feeling other colors and I'll work with other colors. But most of the time I just work in blue. Just because. It's kind of like my default. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of blue pen, in a sense. Yeah, and she's going to have a lot of patterns. This piece. What did you want to do when you were growing up, and were you good at art when you were younger? Um, people said I was good at art when I was younger, and I look back and I'm like, man, that's not it, chief. <laughs> um... I definitely didn't draw like this when I was younger. I didn't draw like this a year ago, you know? It's like we are, we're all constantly improving. Um, I have always been involved in art, though. It's like my whole family is very, very arts-oriented. Um, and when I was growing up, I, I wanted to do a lot of things. There were a lot of different things I wanted to do. I did want to be an author when I was younger. <laughs> um... And then as I got older, I'm like, man, I want to go into video game arts. And then from like 8th grade to like 12th grade, I was like, yes, I'm going to go into video game arts. I'm going to learn how to do, make video games and do that for the rest of my life, right? Um, and then I went to college for it. And then I started writing my own webcomic. And I was like, man, I way prefer writing comics. <laughs> and I guess I should have seen it coming because I've been drawing comics since I was a kid, right? Um... But, you know, I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing a career change. <laughs> so, you know, now I'm more focused on comic art and I'm more focused on character design and stuff like that and background art and everything. I used to hate background art and then I got older and now I'm like, dude, I love background art. Like, I love playing with atmosphere and I love playing with composition how to really mess around with that so that should be thinner how to really mess around with that kind of stuff you know but it's all just practice and I drew like every single day when I was younger and now I do it professionally and I don't have the time to draw for myself every single day um, but I'll draw for myself when I have the time all true, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. Hi, sorry for turning the light. Don't, don't say sorry. I'm glad you're popping in at all. And hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. Um... Hope I didn't miss much. No, you didn't. The the initial... So I'm just kind of working on the sketch. This whole stream will be me lining. Um, you missed just a little bit of me talking about line art and stuff, but nothing too intense. It'll all be up on the Discord. Right then. Isn't that supposed to be a two-piece? Hmm. No, it can be one piece. Hmm. Okay. She's kind of covering it up over here anyway, so it's okay. I'm also going to have to work with a lot of clothing folds for this one. So that's going to be a lot of kind of secondary lines that are popping in and out. So yeah, I'm trying to make this illustration very, very intricate. 
um, just the character herself because um, I want to focus on line work and intricate line work and stuff like that because I love lining. One of my favorite things to do is lining. Like it's one of the longest processes is the lining, um, but I find it so so fun. I can watch the parts I miss later. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I'm very into very centauri characters, and yet I don't have many of them. I just kind of draw them when I can, or if I'm just kind of feeling like drawing whatever I want. I shouldn't actually mirror this. I should give a little bit more. So, which shows your pencil settings. Like it's really cool. The effect that it gives the pressure is fantastic. Thanks. Um, my pressure is all just how hard I press my hand. Everything is default. <laughs> what you see here, everything is default. The only things I've turned on is opacity, my pressure, ooze, and I've turned yeah, size, my pressure. That's it. G pen. This is a default brush. Right? Even my pressure settings are exactly the defaults, right? I've kind of just... Um, over time, because I really I love tons of line variation, over time it's just me kind of training my hand to press harder in certain spots and whatnot. Um, how many times would you say you go over your liner? It depends how seriously I'm trying to take a, a piece. Right, so this is just like how many sketch passes I do. I only do one pass of liner. I never do more than one. Um, but for sketching, it depends how seriously I'm taking it. So for this one, I'm probably going to stick with... I might actually do three passes. Actually, you know what? I'm looking at how much time I got. I'm going to stick with two passes. Um, so this will just be kind of like my second pass, and then I'll get straight into line art. Um, but yeah, it depends how seriously I go. We have mods in the chat now. Yep. So we're kind of implementing mods. We're kind of figuring it out. So Jay is one of our lovely graphic designers. And I suppose he's going to be starting to mod for us as well. Um, but yeah, we're going to be kind of messing around with stuff. In the upcoming streams, we're just kind of testing new things. Because now our audiences are getting a little bit bigger. So we've got <laughs> we've got to kind of up our, our moderator game, I suppose. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fur. Fur is something where you really need to know how to line. <laughs> ah, G-Pen, yes, me too, Yuri. 99% <laughs> of the time, if I'm just sketching, I stick with the G-Pen. Like, I never switch. Um, I'm probably just going to use the regular pen for lining this time around, because I want really clean medical lines this time um but if i'm looking for something more stylized i use the g pen in photoshop i switch between my brushes a lot depending on what i'm lining so i have an ink set that i bought um from true grit supply that works really nicely when i want r rougher lines um when i'm sketching i switch between kyle's pencil and um oh man Kyle's pencil and Kyle's builder brush are the two that I use. And I also have a textured brush and I forget where I got it, but I got it for free. Um, but Photoshop is, again, if you don't know, is what I use most of the time. Um, but Medibang is free and it's like, you know, the accessible... Um, the accessible program. Uh, I never understood why it was called the G-Pen. What does G stand for? I have no clue. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know why it's called the Mapping Pen either. They're almost exactly the same. It's like, yeah. If anyone knows that, feel free to educate us. I don't know. And hello, Thunder Beast. Welcome in.
Kyle, yeah, Kyle's Adobe products. <laughs> I use a lot of the Kyle brushes. I love them. <laughs> the Patreon content is great, too. Everyone should think, check out. Thank you, Gabriel. Yes, we do have a Patreon. I will plug that a little bit later, but our Patreon is in um, the description, so if you ever have some spare change, um, feel free to join the Patreon for extra content. <laughs> the G pen, the God pen, felt. It's just a little bit, it has a lot of nice texture. I like texture with my brushes, usually. Um, it actually depends what I'm doing, but it's a really good guess. <laughs> LOL. You can just look it up, I guess. I'm, I can't really look it up right now, but if you want to look it up, what does G stand for? Do you think it stands for granulated? Random guess, but what if, you know? This actually could be brought out a little bit more. Don't draw with the G pen anyways, draw with the pen and pencil. Hmm. Yeah, I tried the pencil tool on like the pencil over here and like it's just a it's just a hard round that's um pressured by opacity and I'm like well this doesn't give the texture of a pencil so I I played around with them some more and I'm like oh here's a textured brush and so now I just use a G pen for everything <laughs> No worries, Jetsu, we have commands now. I see. Can't wait to see it done. Thank you, Arunia. And welcome in, Arunia. Arunia is one of our lovely instructors. Oh my god, I keep closing the window by accident. And I keep changing my mouse speed. And yes, Arunia is one of our lovely instructors. Glad to have you here. Oh, we got a lot of the Wing Canvas staff in today. <laughs> yes, we have a staff. There's a whole thing. What do you think about painting and doing line art on the same layer? That's what I do. <laughs> I paint with one layer. I have never, like, I love painting just one layer throughout. Usually when I do paintings, my max amount of layers is like four layers. Excluding all my overlays and stuff. Like, I have one for sketching, one for... Um, the flats, one for shadow, and then one that I merged it all together, and I paint that. I paint like a traditional artist. <laughs> That's how I do traditional painting. That's how I do painting digitally. It's like I paint like a traditional artist, as if I have, like, no layers at all. I hate using too many layers. Like, I, I, I can't stand it. I know a lot of friends who use, like, tons and tons of layers, but, like, I can't do that. I had a comic page that I finished recently and it, there was so many layers and it made me so mad. I was like, oh, there's so many layers here. I hate this. <laughs> oh, it's fun to see these creations. Gotta work on my digital game. Yes, join us. Join the digital side, Arunia. <laughs> and if not, that's fine too. But trust me, digital changes everything. <laughs> I really want, like, a... Because I work on a PC. I really want, like, a small touchscreen, like, laptop that's, like, portable. That I can take with me so I can, like, draw on it. Part of me really wants a, uh... A Wacom Studio thing. Which is, like, a... It's, like, a, a computer, basically. But, like... It's, like, a Cintiq, but if it was a computer. And, like, part of me wants it, but I'm, like... <sighs> Do I want to shell out like three thousand dollars for one? I learn a lot by watching. That's how I learn. I prefer to just watch people draw compared to tutorials. <laughs> That's why I learned so much from speed paints. I'm like, oh, techniques. I will pick that up. Went back tra to traditional this week with Posca. My Posca markers just sit around. They're like in my drawer, and I like never touch them, but they're there. <laughs> I should I should use them more. I did ask for them a while back. I've used them maybe like I've used them very few times. I it looks so good. I was drawing along, but lol. That's all right. Hello Shania, welcome in. Um, do I tilt the pen or is it just pressure? Just pressure. Um, Medibang doesn't have tilt sensitivity. I know that Photoshop does and Clip does too, but um, Medibang doesn't have tilt sensitivity. 
little bit annoying, but it's okay. I don't usually use tilt sensitivity anyway. Um, but yeah, no, just pressure. Just me controlling the wrist. When I was younger, I used a lot of tilt sensitivity. Um, haha, Photoshop was my first program. Um, the only reason for that is because I use a definitely legal version of Photoshop. Um, but... Yeah, I find myself not using a lot of tilt press tilt sensitivity anymore. <laughs> Painting in line art on the same layer is impossible for me. It's actually not that bad. So great to see her thought process. Um, and those ideas come to life. Yeah. My traditional line work is way better than my digital. That's what it used to be for me, too. Um... Both look fine to me now, but it's because your digital work will pick up on your handshake a lot better. Or a lot more. You don't really get a lot of that traditionally. So digitally, you get a lot of that, though. And it's like, oh man, it's all so shaky and awful. Maybe that's because I use my finger. That, too. And welcome in, Savage Boy. It is a little bit different working with a tablet compared to your finger. I could never. I'm like, I'm such a... <laughs> Wait. Man. It happened again when I tried to sneeze, and then it didn't happen. So now I'm just left here sneezeless. Awful. <laughs> my, my nose hurts. Ugh. Lining with a finger is so difficult. Yeah, no, I could never. I have a friend. I know a few people who are mouse artists. So instead of using a digital tablet, they use a mouse. And they're so, so good. And I'm like, you're insane. Um, I'm so sorry for your wrist. <laughs> that must be so bad for your wrist. Because um, it really is. It's, it's terrible for your wrist. Um, but they're so good at what they do. Because it's far more ergonomic to work with a tablet. I know that not everybody has the option for a tablet, but some mouses, some mice cost more than a tablet. I actually just got a mouse pad, an ergonomic mouse pad, so it's really nice. Um, let me scroll back up for a second. It is, but since I have long pencil-like fingers, it should be easy, I see. I mean, it's easier using a pen rather than just using a mouse, yes. Very true. That was fast. Yeah, I don't like to take too long with my sketching, but now we can get into the lines. So now I can get into actually cleaning everything up. You guys can see my zoom, my lining process, and this means that I will be zooming in like crazy. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm also going to be turning off my correction because I think I need it this time around. So I love, I'm going to take it a little bit slower this time because I really want to keep this lines, these lines nice and clean. Very methodical, because usually I go a little bit fast on these streams, but I'm going to go a little bit slower this time. And again, a lot of line work is just the control of the wrist. As much as I love, like, really thick, intense line work, I'm also a very big fan of very delicate line work as well. Yeah, I got an ergonomic mouse pad. Um, lots of control Z then, possibly. There are some cheap tablets that work with a phone, so there are some options that don't break the bank. Yes, indeed. There are some very, very cheap options. Um, my brother's tablet I got for free. Um, I, I got it for him, but it was like... <laughs> when I entered college, they gave us tablets. And I was like, well, I have two, so I don't really need this one. And I was like, here, Childa. My brother's nickname is Childa. I was like, here, Childa, take this. And he was like, ooh. Now he calls it a small boy. It's one of those really, really tiny Wacoms. <laughs> Seeing lots of Control-Z. I usually don't 
Well, actually, no, that's a lie. I do some control Z. <laughs> control Zing. Man, there's some points where I'm now I'm like, man, I wish I did. I wish I had color, but I know that I'm not going to be doing color this time around. G pen of those ink pens, Mako comic artists use their cleanup with G nibs. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> it's a G nib. Okay, got it. <laughs> Blamer though, I feel. Hey, Jess, I finally made it to one. Hello, V. Welcome in. V is one of my friends. Um, just really want a drawing tablet. Trust me, they're quite. They're, some of them are quite cheap. This is some awesome line art thing. Thank you. Is there any Michaels? Because last time I was there, I got stuff for traditional. No, I don't believe Michaels sells. Um, for those who don't know, Michaels Craft Store. Um, I think that's like a. <laughs> it's an American Canadian thing. Um, but no, last time I checked, Michaels doesn't really sell any digital work. What you can probably do is order it online, though. I got my tablet used. Woo woo. <laughs> Last time I was at Michael's, I went in with 80 bucks and walked out with just a nickel. That sounds like me with um conventions, when conventions were still a thing. I remember one convention I went to, I walked in with uh, $300 and I walked out with uh, 20 So, you know, that kind of, <laughs> you know, fun stuff. Man, I miss conventions, dude. Oof, I felt this, yeah. Pain. Okay. And some people are always like, oh man, my line art looks terrible after I do all my my stuff. How do I fix that? Well, my friend, you just got to turn off your sketches every once in a while. Because if you keep your sketch on the whole time, you won't be able to see what your lines look like without the sketch. And that's very, very crucial, right? You kind of need to know what it looks like. So constantly be checking without it. Oof, well, okay. Yeah, it's better if you just order online. Most of the time, it's easier that way. <laughs> yeah, very delicate lines for a lot of the face. The face is where you want to be the most careful. Because the face is what the eye will lead to the first 99% of the time. So if you ever want to figure out where you need to be the most delicate with your lines, the face is 100%, like, almost number one. All the, almost all the time. The face is like where you need to be paying the most attention. What I really love about Medibang's pen is that it's so delicate. Like you can get really delicate with it if you have like a a really controlled wrist. Or a really controlled hand. Which is what I really like about it. When I first used Medibang, I was like, alright, this pen tool rules. It's like very, very soft. Will you see any of this detail when you zoom out? No, but I am having fun. <laughs> I have shaky, shaky hands. So I do really bad when I do line art. That's why you turn up your correction. You turn it up to like a crazy amount. I have mine at 23 right now. And yeah, you definitely do get better as time goes on. Trust me. My first line art, um, because my first tablet... Oh yes, for those who are kind of thinking of getting art tablets, you never need your the best thing for first, alright? Well, my very first art tablet, older than I am, I had no pen pressure, it barely connected to my old laptop that had a broken charger, so trust me, a broken charging port, sorry, so trust me, you don't need the best to start off, right? Now I use a Cintiq, I use a, a PC that can apparently is really really powerful for anybody who knows anything about computers i have a 2070 super an nvidia 2070 super graphics card and i think that's good i don't <laughs> my brother's like it's really good and i'm like <laughs> so pretty thank you um practicing with line art like with quick quick lines or slow lines the best way to get better at line art's what i do yep but you gotta show the zoom ins when you post the piece somewhere you're so right I want to be inspired to draw, but art block is getting to me. Yeah, I I don't really get art block. I just get motivational block. Um, like I'll always, I'll be willing to draw whenever, but sometimes it's like, man, I'm tired. You know what I mean? 
Move your arm instead of your wrist for long lines. That too. That's very, very crucial. Instead of just using your wrist. So right now I'm using my wrist because they're very small lines that I'm working with right now. Um, but when you have very, very large sections. So for the body, I'm mostly going to be using my arm. Um, but for the section right now, all just wrist movements. Drawing with a composition notebook. I draw mostly digitally, but I have a grid. I have a grid journal that's like my sketchbook right now. But honestly, I love the grid. I know some people prefer like perfectly white. I have multiple sketchbooks because I use a moleskin and I use that grid one. And I have a bigger sketchbook too. It's usually there's like not a motivational block, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been running on empty for weeks. Um, that's another story for another time, though. Um, but yeah, I'm never usually short on inspirational block. It's just motivational. All right, give me like two seconds. Sorry, my whole body hates me right now. Um, motivational block is when you have inspiration to do something, but you can't get your body to do it. So it's like you're kind of sitting there and you're like, man, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, you, you start off, like if you have art block, it's like you have the motivation or something, but you're like, man, I don't know what to draw. Um, motivational block is like, man, I know what to draw. I really want to, but then you're like, man, but I'm tired. <laughs> That's kind of what I, I am always on. I, I rarely have art block. It's always motivational. I can force myself to have inspiration, but I can never force myself to be motivated. Yeah, I noticed what I meant. Yeah. So I'm very bad at forcing myself to be motivated, but inspiration I can force myself into very, very easily. All right, y'all, I just realized it's 5.02. Um, so with that, it is top of the hour. So if you did not know, for those of you who are kind of joining it for the first time, who have never seen our studio before, be sure to check out our website's link, which is the link in the description, because we are not only a YouTube channel, we are also an art school. I am one of the instructors. Some of the people who are in the chat right now are also instructors. Um, so we uh, do teach art lessons privately as well. Um, and this file that you see before you, this um, illustration that I'm currently working on, once it is done, and this one as well, you'll be able to download them on our Discord as JPEGs, which you can find the link to in our in the description below. So you join our Discord, you can get the JPEGs there. You can also see the final images on Instagram. I'm pretty sure we post them on Facebook as well. Um, but if you would like to see my working files for any of the past streams or anything else that I am working on, you're going to have to join our Patreon. And our Patreon is where I upload work working files you get sneak peeks for behind the scenes stuff for the wing canvas channel and the wing canvas studio and you'll also get discounts on our classes so be sure to check those out um because the discounts are a limited amount so be sure to check those out before they are all gone my way of procrastinating is to watch tutorials felt hello maybe arts um today i'm gonna do a comic maybe excellent do it I need to continue my comic pages. <laughs> I've taken a break for them for a couple of days, and I'm like, I need to catch up. Oops, how did this get here? Yeah, I only wish that the, the correction didn't affect the eraser. Right now, I'm learning about how to learn LMAO. Me. Hello, Yashvi. Welcome in. 
I hope I pronounced that right. Yashvi, Yashvi. Hello, Xanthia. Welcome in. I wish I had someone to tell me what to draw. You know what that's called? That's called a prompt bot. Look up a randomized prompt machine. Easy. My brother uses prompts all the time. There we go. Smooth. I got a suggestion. Yes. Oops, I don't know if the social came out. That's okay. Hello, Charlene House. Welcome in. Okay, let me move this back over here so I can see these windows a little bit better. Draw a savage boy. Yes. <laughs> okay, I wish it were that easy. It's called looking up references. I have a ton of references off to the side for this character that I'm drawing right now, so don't worry. References, your best friend. I'm actually going to turn off my correction because I need to do this a little bit faster. Oh, much better. Good grief. Correction was slowing me down. Do I like Junji Ito? I saw him live. I love Junji Ito. He's one of my favorite illustrators. Um, I have a few of his manga collections. I have the exclusive poster he did when he came to Toronto back in 2019. <laughs> I wish I bought his clothing line that came from Crunchyroll. Um, yes, no, I love Junji Ito. He's a really funny guy, a really great illustrator. Um, for those of you who don't like horror, don't look him up. <laughs> But Junji Ito is a legendary Japanese horror artist. Um, he does a lot of really creepy manga. Um, he's gorgeous work. Found your channel through your art teacher today. Hello, Sarah Kim. Goodness, we're spreading. <laughs> but hello. Um, I love Junji Ito. Yes, I love Junji Ito. Um, be as welcome in Sarah Kim. Glad you could make it. We're just lining this character right now because we're learning a little bit about line art. Trying to be a little more gentle in some areas. Yes, I love Junji Ito. I could talk about him for ages. I just like how good his work is. So, so good. But yes, don't don't look him up if you're not into horror. Because his stuff is very, very spooky. Um, it's very much body horror and stuff like that. So. If you want to look him up, do it. Gorgeous stuff. But it is spooky. To be honest, how'd you guys find your art style? Um, it's kind of developed over time. A lot of the times art styles develop over based on what you're influenced by. Um, it's like mine is very kind of Japanese based. Because um, I have a lot of inspirations. My painting style is very based in other artists that I've been following throughout the years. Because I kind of like the... The Japanese very manga sort of style, but I'm also a very big fan of Western kind of posing and stuff like that. And Western topics, I love like cyberpunk, I love steampunk, stuff like that. Um, fantasy. Sorry for being so late. Ah, you can't be late to a stream. Unless if it's like, I, I do know some people show up like 10 minutes before the stream is over. Um, don't worry, you're not too late. And yeah, no, don't worry. You don't find a style and settle for it. A lot of sometimes people do, um, but a lot of the times people slowly their styles change, the way that they draw things change over and over and over, right? And yeah, the styles that we have now, right? It's like it's cool to have stuff that works, but then over time you want to change it, right? When I was young, I wanted nothing but thin line art. 
right? Now I'm very much, I'm quite a thick line arter. I way prefer th thick line art over thin line art. Stuff like that, right? We all grow, we all learn, we all change. Your details. Hello, Geo. Welcome in. Geo is one of our lovely admin. Um, and thank you. This isn't even the detailed portion. This is just me spending way too long on this hair. <laughs> I need to start getting a move on. So the rest of the piece... And I only ever really do undo fests, by the way, if, like, I need to draw circles. A lot of the times, I kind of just settle for what I got. Not something I actively decide on, just how my hand goes. That's how some people do it. Right? They just kind of... Go with the flow, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it's just how art is, too, right? You just don't really think, and you just kind of go with it. Okay. Love how you draw hair. What's your favorite type of hair to draw? That's... A terrible question because I'm kidding <laughs> that's an awful question because I just love drawing hair in general um I love drawing long flowing hair I, and that's so funny because I don't have a lot of characters that have long flowing hair um but yeah I love drawing long flowing hair extremely long hair um I have pretty long hair so I recently got it cut first time in like three years because I was like my my mom was like, I should cut your hair before you die it again. And I was like, okay. So she cut my hair recently. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love long flowing hair. My, it's just super, super fun for me to draw. Um, but I just like drawing hair. Hair is one of my favorite things to do. I find it easy. I find it very therapeutic. <laughs> that's, that's why I like hair. This looks so good. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, I used to stress about finding a style or combine other artist styles I like, but habits happen. I just went to mainly focus on improving the art, not my style until I need one. Yes, that's a good basis to have. Improve your art first. Improve your basics first before you focus on a style. A style should be like the absolute last thing you worry about. I promise you. Right? Short hair club. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I have extremely long hair. I, I love my super long hair. Um, as a femme, I can relate to that. I understand. Um, but yeah, no, my hair is super, super long. When I say I cut my hair, it's still like halfway down my back. Like, I mean, like it's like, well, not halfway. It's a little bit longer than that, I think. It's, it's kind of hit the my lower back. It used to be like right above. Um, like, it used to be to my hips, but now it's like um on my lower back. So it's still really long, but... Exactly my thoughts. Yes. Um, oh yeah, and welcome in, Kathy Patricks. Um, I did get inspired by Jamie Hewlett's style. I don't know why, but the way he did the body so nice and gritty. Jamie Hewlett. Is he the one who did... That's Gorilla's artist, isn't it? Jamie Hewlett. Is he? No. Yes, he is. Jamie Hewlett's great. Um, the Gorilla's art style is fantastic. And yeah, combining art styles, kind of figuring out what you like from other art styles, great kind of way to figure it out. Um, just icing on the cake, yeah. Try making boxes. Try and do art styles is so weird. Yeah, I love experimenting with art styles. Here's the thing. All right, let me tell you two secrets about art. All right, one, people always say like, oh, you got to find a style. Versatility is better. I promise you. If you can do 20 different art styles, you are far better off than somebody who's stuck with one, right? This is my personal art style, but I can imitate almost anything I want, right? The having, like, you know, versatility, very, very important, right? Being able to be versatile is extremely important when it comes to your work, um, especially if you want to go into animation, if you want to go into anything, like, entertainment-based, you need that versatility, 
Um, super, super good. Shoulder length hair, hair people. That's my brother. Um, it's a good example of an art cells progressively gets better each time because of improvement. Yes. Over time, it's like, you can still tell that it's his, but it, like, it just kind of gets different. Um, like it improves a little bit and that's really, really cool. Subconsciously inspired by other artists, but not actively trying to stress about it at the moment. Unless I want to draw fan art, and then I don't have a style, so I just throw a simple one together. I understand. Um, yeah, no, I feel that. Here's here's my other secret to art styles, right? Art styles, all they are is rearranging the quote unquote rules of art based on your preferences. That's all that it is, right? Art doesn't have any rules, or it doesn't feel like it has any rules because there are so many rule sets, all right? Every artist has a different set of quote unquote rules that they use to draw, right? That's what a style is. It's kind of understanding how those rules work and how you want them to kind of bend to your will to create a, a look that you're looking for, right? So your art style is just that set of rules changing. So think of realism as the base set of rules, right? Think of realism as like your baseline, right? And then as you start to add on more principles and change those rules, it becomes a different style, Right? You know, say if, like, you know, adults are usually, like, what, seven... Like, men are usually seven to seven and a half heads tall, something like that. Right? Cartooning changes that. So, like, say, let's say that now, because of the more cartoony style, an adult is, like, five heads tall. Something like that. Right? That's just the rule set changing. It's... There's nothing wrong with it. Never. It's just a different set of rules that you've created for yourself. That's all that art is. <laughs> That's all that art styles are, sorry. So if you know how to harness all those different... Oh, that's right, it doesn't have a redo. Um, or it probably does, but I just am not using the right shortcut. Um, so as long as you can harness those different rule sets, you're usually set. Right? Figuring that out over and over and over. My art style turned out to be super kitty, yeah. Yeah, this comes to the dark side of animation. I like how people devalue art as overpriced. Indeed, I have a lot of fun with it, Yeah. Short puffy hair, longer wing, combed, shrinkage hair, yes. Your character's arcana glow, so true. I really want to animate, like it's been a dream to try and animate forever. I have so many ideas and I can't get it done on paper. That could be because I'm dumb. That's okay. My best friend is an animator. I can't animate to save my life. I, I would never. Like, I've done animation a few times and, like, I... It's... <laughs> It's, f like, I <laughs> I don't hate it, it's just I'm not great at it, and, like, I get too frustrated too easily, and, like, I'm very impatient, and you need to be patient to do animation, and I am not patient enough for it. That's why I don't do it half the time. Mike, I'm being considered wavy at first. Still, I welcome you to the shoulder-length hair club. Yes, shoulder-length hair club. Unfortunately, I am not shoulder-length hair club, but I'm glad you guys are having fun with it. <laughs> My brother is part of Shoulder Length Hair Club. I wish I could draw more human OCs. I'm considering turning my characters into Shishinkas soon for more practice. Yes! Shishinkas are so fun! Um, yeah, it's just depending on the artist. Like, if they have realism or mostly chart, they might not enjoy or be initially like an anime cartoon because it's new and very different anatomically. Yes, indeed. Um, I find that a lot of realists struggle with cartooning and a lot of cartoonists struggle with realism, right? Because it's like doing with dealing with different rule sets all the time. Very, very different. Um, nothing wrong with either. Both are very, very valid and great art styles. It's just that they work very, very differently. I accidentally deleted the pen brush. How do I get it back? That I don't know. <laughs> like a specific brush? I don't know that one. Uh oh. <laughs> Redo, control right. Redo is control Y? Really? What? Why isn't it control shift Z? I'm gonna change that, but thank you. Um, Amira. And welcome to the chat, Ethereum. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. Um, you can do it. I recommend doing a basic animation like a ball animation. Yes. And yeah, it can get stressful. Animation can get really, really stressful. I've had a lot of animation assignments and like, it's just not, been nothing but pain. Like, I <laughs> just like, every single time I do it, I like, I was always like, I'm not an animator. I'm not an animator. <laughs> right. 
I think when I was younger, I kind of realized I wasn't an animator either. Like I used to, I always used to use um, Flipnote Studio for the Nintendo DSi. Um, and <laughs> I, I would not be very good at it. And then I'd see my friends. And I'm like, you're so good. Right. And I could never understood the principles properly. And I was like, all right, I don't think I'm an animator. <laughs> Even still, like in theory, I could animate, but like, I'm not, I'm not an animator. I believe it's in select, yeah. Make a contest, I'll do it. Yes. How do I overcome art block? Um, you kind of have to figure out your own formula. Some people prefer to rest, and then they let their, their minds recharge and whatever. Some people play video games, others watch. I, For me personally, if I ever need like a really strong boost of inspiration, um, like I'll draw anything, but there's a, a big difference between being able to draw and drawing something that's like I'm like really really good right um whenever I need a strong boost in inspiration I will watch a Ghibli movie <laughs> I'll watch a Ghibli movie or I'll um watch a speed paint those are the two things that I do most of the time if I am ever in need of a boost in inspiration but it's all about kind of coming up with your own formula for how to get over art block Right, because art block can be it, it's detrimental, especially if you need to like do it over and over and over. Um, like be constantly creative. That's why art is so hard. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe an instant milestone. Think about it. Yes, I'll join. Um take a break as long as you need, look for artist work you really like, maybe watch some movies, viewers get inspired. Yep. <laughs> Someone to write your work. That can be very, very detrimental. Um, some people like getting their work critiqued others hate it i know a lot of artists who hate getting their work critiqued um i don't mind it it just depends on the setting um unsolicited critique can get really annoying for a lot of people um but it, it, it all depends right some people prefer it, some people don't um ghibli movies yes that's my favorite thing to do if i if i ever need a boost of inspiration i watch a ghibli movie I've watched so many. I'm like, I have like a like a catalog in my brain for like, all right, I need to draw something like this. I guess I'll just watch this movie. I think it was like I needed to draw something really. I needed to draw like a fantasy landscape or something, or like something very like, cute. And I was like, all right, time to watch Ponyo. Right? <laughs> it's like I have a catalog. I'm like, okay, which movie do I watch for this occasion? Something like that. Hunter Hunter, you get the big motivation. Here's the thing with Hunter Hunter, right? My intense obsession with it has kind of died down. I did really like Hunter Hunter. I still do. Um, but I rarely rewatch anime. Like if I have if I've watched anime, I'll watch it once and then I'm like I probably won't come back to it. I know a lot of people like to rewatch it. I'm not a rewatcher. The only movies and thing like I have to re like really love it <laughs> if I'm gonna rewatch it, right? Movies are the same thing. Right, I have to really love it if I gotta rewatch it. So you know that I adore Ghibli because I've seen it almost every movie twice. <laughs> like at least. Um, sometimes doing figure drawing gets me back in the mood when I hit an art block. Yes, full reset and a full good fundamental practice helps loosen up. Yeah. When I find when I get really, really frustrated with my work, I drastically change my art style just for the time being. So I can try something new. It's kind of like an art reset. That's how I think of it. Watched Monster. That You gotta be more specific with that one. Try some things, change your direction. Like me, I usually study nowadays, prove my fundamentals, but rarely draw for fun. So at times if I study good or learn but needed, then I'll... I'm assuming that it continues. Reward myself for drawing something fun. Yeah. Only anime I'll rewatch is Full Metal Alchemist and Ghibli. Yep, fair enough. I haven't finished Full Metal as a an anime, but I've read the whole manga, and that was like I love Full Metal. I've never read anything better <laughs> in terms of manga. Read the manga, yeah. Oh, is it an anime? I didn't know that. I've seen people who use paint tool sign and then pick a line, add joints, and kind of mesh those lines to line art. You know how to do that keybind if that feature is in other programs. I have never seen that before. <laughs> I've never worked in paint tool sign. It's one of the programs I've never touched. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I don't know what that is. I work in Photoshop and CSP, and CSP, again, is more rare than Photoshop for me. Photoshop is what I do 99% of the time. You just rewatched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Excellent choice. Okay. 
better than that. Here's me using the line tool because I'm too lazy to do this properly. There we go. I reached, we watch Snow White with the red hair every year because of the first anime memories. I've never heard of that one. I feel like, I feel like, here's the thing, right? Is like, people think that I'm like a really big anime person. I'm really not. Like, I like anime, but I'm much more of a video games person. <laughs> but I always make friends within the anime circles. <laughs> so I'm always like, okay, well, <laughs> it's like, I can't really relate to half. But like, you know what? I'll listen to you talk about it and I will, and I will enthusiastically listen sleepovers with your friend watch till midnight that sounds so nice but yeah I'm a very big video game person like I far prefer video games over watching anime so you have good taste Jay <laughs> yes indeed Like, I'm a very big video game person. Like, I really loved, um, like, Resident Evil 8 just came out, and I'm like, dude, so good. <laughs> I'm really not either anime room. Want to make, want to make a manga to adapt into anime. Adapt into anime. Make sure that you're doing your stuff for the right reason. Right? If you're creating just to impress others or to make, like, you know, um, to get popular or something, you'll get burnt out very, very fast. I think my pencil size broke and didn't save my work normally, so that's why I draw on many things. I see. I don't like. I don't know many of the retro or new anime these days. I know a few of the new anime just because I teach a lot of younger kids. Um, but I know quite a few of the retros. I want to watch more retro anime, but again, time. <laughs> Video games take up less of my time, and even then, I don't really play that many. I prefer to watch. I watch playthroughs more so than I actually play them, just because, you know, in the, for the sake of time and whatever. But now I really have, I'm starting to have a hankering to actually play Resident Evil 8. We'll see. Fundamentals are basically key to learning things. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Lady Dimitrescu, she's really hard to draw, but she's so fun to draw. When it comes to, like, more realistic games, I always find that, like, I, I struggle to draw the characters at first because it's, like, I, I'm, like, man, I gotta draw them, like, more realistically. And then over time, they just slowly become ingrained in my art style, and I'm, like, all right, well, they don't really look like the original anymore, but so be it. Not to impress, just really, like, stories to come to life. I understand. Yeah. A manga to get adapted into an anime, though, it's gotta get real popular first. <laughs> That's why I kind of questioned, um, because I know some some people who are like, you know, they create stories just to get popular or whatever, and I'm like, that's not how you go about it, because like if you do that, you're gonna get burnt out twenty times faster. Like you're gonna get burnt out even if you do it just for fun, right? Like just for your own enjoyment or something that you enjoy. But if you just do it for attention, you'll get burnt out twenty times faster. It gets a lot harder to enjoy what you're doing. Okay, 5.28. Oh, making good time. All right. Mm, clean line work. This is better <laughs> than the other line work that I do on stream. I'm like, yes, here we go. Much cleaner. Much better. People don't have time normally when they're 17 plus. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm turning 20 this year and I'm like, man. I can't wait. I'm like, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have an existential crisis. I heard that a really small portion of mangas are actually adapted to anime. That's very true. I draw to relieve stress. That's a great way to. That's a great way to do it. Yeah, I have a lot of um, friends who do that too. Like they're not like art. They're not going to do art professionally, but they do it more for like hobby, um, as like a hobby. And that's those are called hobbyists, and they're they're like the f most free artists. <laughs> they're free from all restraints, and I I I envy them sometimes, but. Yeah. That's called being a hobbyist, and that's totally valid. I respect it. That actually 
actually doesn't make sense. This needs to be more like that, that doesn't it? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Not sure if I really need adaptation because I'd be happy if it just got the manga out and be like, OMG, I made this. This is enough. Yes. I don't know if I'd want to do a manga. I just, I want to, yeah, like I have a, I have a webcomic, right? But I'd, I'd love to, like I need to properly publish it. But, you know, you know, if we're like dreaming big or whatever, right? I'd love to print it one day. 17, I know that I have a lot of time. Just don't spend it wisely, me. Why, but anime takes 3,000 pictures per episode. 3,000? You think that's it? <laughs> that's definitely not it. I don't think, anyway. If you do the math, it's probably far more. Here's the thing, right? Most animation, 30 frames per second. Right? So 30 frames per second, 30 times 60, 60 times 24. Whatever that is. Right? At the very, very minimum. Some anime are more than that. Some are 60 FPS. And then you have, like, the colorists and everything. So the pipeline, and they have to, like, kind of force them to do it. Studio Ghibli, if you're wondering, every month, they'd get maybe a minute of film done. Something like that. A minute or two of film done. So, think about that. Turn 19 in two days. Boy, the stress is real. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. When I turned 19, it was in the middle of quarantine. I was like, man. <laughs> Math. <laughs> Yuri, I wish it was 3,000. Yuri, our resident animator who has worked professionally in animation. <laughs> we got the opening. I'm going to be honest with you. I know people get hyped up to openings a lot. I rarely get hyped up to openings. I know that people do, and I'm like, that's great, but some of them are great, and then I'm like, that's that's sweet, but like, I'm not the type to actually listen to anime openings outside of the anime. <laughs> I know I'm boring, but, you know, I want to get to the content of the episode. Like, it, cool, opening, but, like, I just, <laughs> I, want, I want to get to the content of the anime. <laughs> How many hours would it take for one episode? Hours. How many how many months? <laughs> Print, that's what I wanted want to do. I what I do want though, then I'd be like more wow because it's another way to show I made it. Besides I love physical books. The smell of the sound of turning pages just mwah, beautiful. Yes, I agree. Physical books, there's just something magical about them. I've always preferred reading a physical book over listening to a PDF, or reading a PDF. Um, if I'm reading it myself, I do like to listen to audio stories. They're usually never of, like, physical books. They're usually of, like, you know, internet stories or whatever. <laughs> but, yes, there is something different about a physical book compared to a, an online one. Print is definitely a great creative field to explore as well, yeah. I've never been a printmaker. I, I tried it, and I was very bad at it. And I kept trying, and I was like, ah. <laughs> it appears as though I do not have the patience. There are a lot of creative things I wish I could. Like, I love sewing. That's one thing I wish I had more time to do, to sew. Like, I love sewing. Like, cutting out patterns, figuring out. That sort of stuff. I love sewing. Okay. Openings are really, really cool because it shows practically everything that happens in the story. Here's the thing, right? Is that openings, like, some of them are so intense and crazy and then the anime is just really dumb. Like, it's like they're never honest. <laughs> Actually, some of them are honest, but some of them aren't. You know, free Iwatobi Swim Club, that opening is not even close to what the anime is, you know? <laughs> or, um, The Circumstances of My Bathtub, I think that's what it's called. That one has such an intense opening. But it's, like, it's about a guy who finds a mermaid in the 
or a merman in the in his river and he has to live in the bathtub for a while. <laughs> Honestly, that anime is so good. <laughs> it was so dumb. I watched it when I was 14. I watched a lot of really weird anime when I was younger. <laughs> Jesse, without the sketch, it looks like the fingers are the two legs for your drawing. LOL. <laughs> Yes. If you wish to go into animation, I wish you luck. You better love it. <laughs> you better love animation to be an animator. Because if not, it's soul crushing. I guess that's the same with most arts. But you gotta love it. As Yuri calls it, the dark side. <laughs> Yes, but overall, I wish you the best. You know, there's a lot of things to keep in mind, but you know, do what you love. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. All right, here's where I'm going to start using my full hand, my full arm, because I need to do the full body. There we go. <laughs> Quick. Oh, 536. Mm. All right. I could do it to classes, but I still, but I like still pictures and manga or comics. Yeah. Yeah, when I was younger, I thought I wanted to be a game artist, and here we are, you know. <laughs> don't be, don't, don't feel like you've failed if your original plan doesn't work either, you know, or doesn't turn out the way it, you want it to. You know, people change their career paths all the time. They change what they want to do, they realize their interests have changed, right? Your career and your journey as an artist will constantly be changing. Going to manga, I recommend learning different languages, going to different countries, yeah. Because manga is, you know, it's a Japanese form of comic, right? Though manga is also, like, it's a certain style when it comes to um, illustrating a comic as well. A manga is illustrated differently than a Western comic. I prefer, like, when I was younger, I wrote more in the manga style. Now I write more in the Western style. But, you know, it's a little bit different. Could always make little animations for manga. Yep, you could do that. So it feels like I didn't learn it for nothing. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? Is like I, I have like knowledge for pre production with game art and whatever. So like now I'm like I have that kind of I have a different set of knowledge for art, but I, I still apply it when I teach stuff. Right, or when I illustrate. We are getting there. We're getting there. I need to fix her lines actually up here. Because we should make this a little bit thicker here. 
So there's some parts of the silhouette that are a little bit difficult to distinguish. Oops. I'd love to live in Japan. My family's against it, especially my mom. I'm still too young to go by myself because that's the only way I could probably go. No one would probably want to come with me. Yeah, moving to a different country is difficult. It's like... I get it. Um... Like, especially because it's, it's such a big culture shock. Or not culture shock, but it's a big change in culture. It's a big change in just everything in general. Um, personally, I like it here in Canada. <laughs> um, like, I'd love to travel, but I don't know if I'd want to stay anywhere other than here. You could go there for study, but that is a lot of money. <laughs> money is always a factor. so pretty there. I heard the people are really nice. Yeah. But it is a different culture. Very, very different culture compared to the Western world. Doing great, Jess. Thank you, Yuri. Yeah, probably if you take a class in college, study abroad. Yep. That's one way to do it. Sorry, I turned off my mic so you didn't have to hear me sneeze. There we go. Yes. Though you may have heard me fiddling with my mic. <laughs> you have to put things pretty well, though. Yeah, so do I. But, you know, still, it's something to keep in mind. Because you got to research, especially when you're switching cultures entirely, right? Or not switching cultures, but switching countries with different cultures, you know? Always gotta research, always gotta think about different things. It'll be kind of hard to move around without knowing the language, stuff like that, right? Leonard's amazing so far. Thank you! A lot of detail, sadly we won't see it all if you zoom out. Yeah, this is just me kind of fulfilling my, my want to do something hyper detailed, you know? Because it's been a while since I've done a lot of really hyper-detailed line work. This is why you joined the Discord, so you can zoom in on your own time. Canada's one of the best countries to live, I think. Thank you. A lot of Canadians would disagree with you. <laughs> it depends on who you ask, I guess. Vancouver's quite nice. Japan is it's super expensive, that too, yeah. Already trying to learn Japanese. Yep. I tried to learn Japanese when I was younger. I didn't have the willpower for it. <laughs> trying to make some of the foods. Yeah. Everything is like, yep, that's that's my life. That's, <laughs> that's art is not a cheap hobby, guys, or cheap job. Cheap anything. Art, art's not cheap. Period. It's why it costs so much. That's why you gotta pay your artists right. I love to just buy my stuff from small businesses because it's usually cared for pretty nicely. And also, you know. Money. <laughs> Barely got through Hiragana. Kind of noped out real quick. <laughs> Me. Yep, and prices. There's always inflation. Inflation is disgusting. I can't believe we're talking about economy on, on an art stream. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> the joys, you know. My thing is always nothing is impossible, but you gotta think reasonably too. So, it's hard to take leaps of faith. Sometimes you gotta do it, but always keep in mind that leaps of faith rarely work out. So, 
prepare as best as you can if you do want to move to Japan. Especially the art supplies, anime figures. I mean, I don't usually add in anime figures to my grand total of supplies that I absolutely need, but... <laughs> One step at a time. Yep. One step at a time. Ugh, okay. <laughs> The only thing that kind of sucks about this is because I gave her plates on both sides of the body, so it's like I can't just like swoop that whole time. Because I gotta drop fur on this side too. Alright, I might as well just erase that. Ugh. Yeah, I'm changing the shortcut from control Y to something else. Like, that's. You gotta reach so far for that. People are probably nice in Japan, however they feel inside is completely different. It depends, yeah, because, you know, different cultures, right? You gotta be, like, they're kind there because, you know, respect is a really big thing in Japan. And, you know, different cultures, different types of respect, stuff like that, you know? I know I'm never going to be fluent moving someplace. Never say never. Moving someplace different could help me change some things, think differently my art creation, everything, be more bold. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Japan where you move to, though. One place that I'd really, really love to vis visit is just like, um, just anywhere, really. Um, I'd love to visit China just for the, the architecture mostly. I'm a really big architecture person. Teach me some respect, yeah. Communicate everyday life, that's enough. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I'd love to visit different countries. Like, not, not just Japan. Like, I'd love to go to Japan, obviously, but, like, I'd love to go to just different places in general. I'd love to go to Greece. I think the architecture there is beautiful. That's where I'd probably move if I moved out of the country, yeah. If I moved out of the country, I'd probably end up going to, like, Britain or so, the UK or something. Just because it's similar enough, but... Every single time I hear about, like, the UK or Europe or something, I'm like... I realize how large Canada is. Because, like, I hear about, like, how you can just, like, drive and you can get to other parts of the country... It takes a literal, it takes a day <laughs> to get from one province to the other if they're next to each other. It takes longer to fly to British Columbia than it does, like from Ontario to British Columbia. It takes longer to fly there than it does from Ontario to the Dominican Republic. Okay, pull out a map for a second, right? Dominican Republic is on the other hemisphere of the earth. <laughs> it's on the other end of the earth. <laughs> Come visit me in Istanbul, Jesse. I mean, I'd love to visit anywhere. Country I know. Country I'd like to visit is Russia. Russia has beautiful places, too. I'd love to go to Moscow. Love to participate in international conventions in the future. future. Yeah. I'd love to go to Singapore. UK is a mess. It's very disorganized. Everyone who is within their own countries just thinks that it's a mess. I, like, half the Ontarians that I know, because, like, I'm in Ontario, Canada, half the, half the Ontarians that I know is, like, Ontario's so gross, man, why are you, why are we here? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't mind it here, I think it's fine, like, there's stuff that we can improve, obviously, but, like, I think it's alright here. I like smaller places, I don't need to go very much, very much places I usually stay at home. I'm more adventurous than 
I usually let on. So it's like I like to go. I'd love to go and visit places. <laughs> Jay, you survived volcano. Yeah, the farthest I've ever been outside of Canada is the Dominican Republic. And still, Canada is larger than that distance. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> oh my god, is there ten minutes left of this? Okay. I gotta move faster. Because I have somewhere to be after this. Oh dear. I may just cut off the fur early then. Because I wanted it to go down the whole back, but I'm seeing how this is happening now. <laughs> Jay, you want to elaborate on the volcano story? Yeah, Jay. <laughs> I don't think I've heard this story either. Like, my cousins, my cousins live in Jamaica, and I'd love to visit Jamaica, or any of my cousins in Jamaica, or the Philippines, or anything like that, right? My cousins are everywhere. I have cousins in Jamaica, I have cousins in the Philippines, I have cousins in China. It's just like, I got family everywhere. <laughs> like, but I'd love to visit Jamaica one day. Before COVID lockdown, I went on a trip to the Philippines, visit family not too long after a volcano erupted. It was potentially still active. Oh, yeah, that's right. I heard about that. Yeah, the Philippines is wild. I've never been. Like, obviously, my mom's been because, like, you know, she lived there for a while, but, like. I want to draw a full illustration. I don't know what to draw. Inspire yourself. Oh my god, yeah. Mom, though, has to go to somewhere new in our state of break. I'm like, no, let me stay at home. Work on my art. Sometimes I like the change if I struggle with my art, though. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. How am I today? I'm doing all right, thanks. Thank you, Aiden. Welcome in, even though we're almost done here. Oh, you told Yuri back when you were in studio, I see. Hope everyone's okay. Yeah, the Philippines has been through a lot. <laughs> Every single news story I hear about the Philippines is like something new, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, you could have like a more portable kind of art setup, Kathy. Like, you could have like, you know. That's why I always bring, like, when I was younger, I would always bring a minimum of, like, two sketchbooks everywhere. <laughs> I remember going on my grad trip. I bought th I brought three with me back in eighth grade. Fun stuff. When we went to Ottawa. By the way, Ottawa, another full day, like, almost full day drive. <laughs> from, from, like, where I live to Ottawa. And it's in the same province. Canada's huge. Like, if you think that your country's big, Canada's huge. Um, the only, like, they're, Canada's one of the largest land masses. Like, I know India's really large, Russia's really large. But Canada? Ginormous. Russia is bigger than Canada, though. China is too, I think, but we're huge. How are you? I'm doing YouTube drawing anime, but not on my YouTube channel. I'm shy. Hello, it is just Mia. I'm doing alright. Hi, what I miss. Hello, Blue Diamond. Um, well, I made this, like, six-ish minutes left of the stream. Um, we were doing this big line art piece. I actually need to fix her face a little bit. Um, we're doing this big line art piece because we're learning about, we learned about line art today. Um, I talked a little bit about line waiting and stuff, but most of the time it's been me working on this. But glad you can join even if you are a little bit late. That's all good. There's always replays. Literally drove past the volcano. He's kind enough to put his life on the line to bring us mango snacks. <laughs> ah, the joys. Man, I miss the studio, dude. He 
he's a good friend here. <laughs> you keep him. Yeah, I mean, he, we've kept him at the studio since 2018. He's been at the studio longer than I have, so. I don't think we can get rid of Jay that easily. No volcano is going to stop him. <laughs> Wait, can this lore? We love to see it. Hot me. Yeah, so this tail segment, I'm using my whole arm to line because it's a long, kind of flowing line, right? These kind of bigger segments, here's where I start to use the undo button more. Um, these bigger segments are where you want to use your whole arm instead of just your wrist. Because it'll get a nice flowing motion. It'll also save your wrist a little bit more. Don't forget to hydrate. I have not been drinking the water that I gave myself. Like, I have a cup of water right next to me. I'll drink in a second. Just let me finish this. <laughs> We're almost done. Did I do this wrong? Oof. I think I did. I messed up a little bit. Oh, well. I'll live with it. Doesn't matter. Something about working with a team just feels right. I like working in teams sometimes. <laughs> if it's a, like an illustrative project, 99% of the time I prefer to work on my own. But with anything else, I can live with it most of the time. And yes, it's important to keep your... Man, now you're all talking about hydration. I need water now. <laughs> Jay left to face that volcano, left me with two of his classes. Deserved a mango. <laughs> yeah, you did. Everyone go drink a glass of water. Yes, get some water, everyone. Normally, if I was paying a little more attention, these scales should be kind of curving with the body. Right, they should follow the body's 3D forms. Unfortunately, I didn't really pay attention for the beginning portion, but it's okay. <laughs> I kind of got it in there. Hi, hello, Peanut Bush. Welcome in. Um, We're almost on the stream, but thank you for popping in. How long have I been to this live stream? Well, um, we've been here for a couple of hours. <laughs> attention. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jay. Oh, the other day, as in yesterday, I like, I'm a very avid online buyer. I buy stuff online all the time. And I, <laughs> I hadn't checked the mail in a couple of weeks. And I was like, all right, I guess I should go check the mail today, right? Because I got a, I got a notification that like one of my keycaps came in. And I was like, cool, one of my artisan keycaps came in the mail. Um, and I was like, all right, it's time to check the mail. So I went to go check the mail, right? And there were... You know, there's like, you know, like if you have community mailboxes, there's like other sections, like you're given another key where you can open other sections of the mailbox just in case you get bigger packages don't fit in your little cubby, right? So I was like, oh, um, I got the little key. I got to open up the other part of the cubby. So I did, right? And there was so many packages in there. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what did my neighbors order, right? There's so much stuff in here. And every single package was for me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, then I guess. Last night I drew my cup of tea, but instant regret because I got really thirsty. Me. <laughs> Did it just become a cup by the end? <laughs> okay. Okay. 
I think I'm almost done here. I think. Yeah, I'm just kind of double checking my stuff. Forgot this detail. I should actually make that thinner. Yeah. Gotta go. Bye, guys. Keep learning. Keep trying. I'll check back later. Actually, the stream is pretty much done. <laughs> Um, but yeah, bye, Kathy. Nice talking to you. Hope you come back again. Um, but yeah, guys, with that, it's six o'clock, and I believe that that's the end of our stream. Um, let me just actually fix this face a little bit, because now the line waiting is different. Because I just went back to my default of super dark lining. Super dark and thick lining. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Um, yeah, how did you show up? Goodbye. But yeah, guys. Thank you so much for joining. That's pretty much the end of the stream. If you did not know, we are also in an art school, so not just an art channel. So be sure to check out the link in the description for our website so you can check out all of our classes because that's where we offer them. Um, I am one of the teachers and we have lovely Yuri, who's also one of the instructors and other people within the chat who are also instructors. Um, so be sure to check all of that out. And this illustration that you see before you, this one and this one, both of them will be available on our Discord as JPEGs where you can download them um, there. So this will be up on the Discord right after this stream and so will this. So you can download them, keep them, save them, do whatever you want with them. Just do not repost them. They're all yours though on that front. Um, and but if you would like my working files, so some of my files that I do on stream are a little bit more um, layer heavy. So if you'd like any of those working files, be sure to check out our Patreon, which is where you can get all of those working files. Um, that way you'll also know. Um, and you'll also get some behind the scenes sneak peeks and stuff where we'll be updating you every other week on that. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining everyone. Um, next week, I believe... Oh, what is next week? Oh my, what was next week? I don't remember. Oh, next week is lighting. We're going to be talking about lighting next week. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. I'll talk about a few of the strategies that I do when it comes to lighting and shadows and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining everyone. And I'll see you next week. Whoa. I'll see you again next week um, when we talk about lighting. Bye-bye.